Hey Glams, welcome to Glamour and Brains. I'm your host, Aja Yasir. This show features all things beauty, fashion, and business. I'm going to be bringing you all things glamour. And of course, with glamour, you have to have brains. Are you ready to make as much money as you want from the comforts of your home or from anywhere in the world? Well, join the Simple Beauty Naturals family by starting your own Simple Beauty Naturals franchise. Make incredible unlimited income with natural vegetarian skincare products that won't kill you. Simple Beauty Naturals is the gold standard skincare and cosmetic system and our franchisees are gold standard certified beauty consultants. Go to www.simplebeautynaturals.com to apply to be one of our franchisees. You deserve to live the life you want. And now today's episode of Glamour and Brain. Hi, Glams. I am working on an audio documentary called The Driven Project that features women who earn seven figures plus. And the purpose of the audio documentary is to highlight the struggles and the triumphs that come with entrepreneurship while inspiring you to keep going no matter what through what Ever goes on, you have to just keep going and keep your vision in your head. Today's show features just a small snippet of my interview with Roberta Hosky. She's the CEO of Outreach Realty Services. Enjoy and join our mailing list at glamourandbrains.net to stay posted about when the final documentary will be released. Hi, Roberta. Hello, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm well today. Good. Happy and sunny outside. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Um, well, you know, my name is Roberta Hosky. I'm the president of Outreach Realty Servicing, uh, located at 390 Whaley Avenue, New Haven, Connecticut. Also the president of Outreach School of Real Estate, um, where we are licensed to train aspiring real estate professionals um, in Connecticut as well as 11 other reciprocal states. I'm also the principal of RH Development Partners which is a develop, my newly formed development company um, and I am in the process of, um, of doing a lot of traveling and talking a lot about how to break what I call the poverty curse. My real estate company, Outreach Realty Servicing, is a real estate brokerage, um, and we help people find properties, sell properties. Uh, we just do every aspect of real estate from rehabbing, flipping, wholesaling, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Now, with real estate, I mean, I, this is something that I was brought up with this mm-hmm. idea that real estate is the foundation of wealth. Oh, I believe it. I I totally agree with that statement and if you look at the top uh, income earners in the nation or internationally they all have real estate portfolios they all have real estate portfolios Oprah has a real estate portfolios Buffett has real estate portfolios of course of course so I know with being an entrepreneur you've been through some things now we're going to be talking about the things that you went through when you were even first beginning your career in real estate what -hmm. was your biggest entrepreneurial failure you know what I so when here's the thing I look at real estate and entrepreneurial for me as two different things Mm -hmm. my company is a result the real estate company is a result of my entrepreneurial um uh my entrepreneurial spirit that's the the result of that is my real estate company so when we look at um failure i also have to say i don't believe in failure i don't think there's a such thing as failure if in the end you learn from it i always look at it as platforms and opportunities um you I, i don't know what a failure is but where I got a little confused, disappoint, 
disappointed and let down was when I was so happy because I was just starting my first company which was outreach property management and this company was a, a company that helped uh, investors find tenants for their investment properties because it defeats the purpose of um, investing in a real estate if you have non-performing tenants at least residential real estate and you have if you have non-performing tenants so my company was doing background credit criminal employment verifications and on these tenants and we had tenants ready to go so I'm super 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 excited and then this is in the beginning so now I have these clients are ready to go now I had to find the, the, the landlords and what I did is I started um, just cold calling and f very fast I learned that I don't like being rejected and so I think my no I, I and I those phone calls that I would make I was super happy because I thought everybody in the world wanted my product it was fabulous and by the way I made it you know everyone thinks that about their their business but um, yeah when those phone calls started saying oh no thank you I don't want that what do you think what do you why do you think I need that I, I became I became crushed. My failure for for your word <laughs> is that I should have done a little bit more due diligence on my audience, who it was that I was trying to seek out, and what characteristics of the person that should been should have been on the other line, and it shouldn't have been me because I don't have I don't like rejection. I really took it personally. I'm getting mad and angry. Well, this is business. You can't. I had to learn to use intellect over emotion, um, but it was it was a it was a lot. I almost started to um, thought I was on the wrong path because of that. Now you mentioned being afraid of rejection, and that's so interesting that you said that because I was just having this conversation with someone this morning. How, as an entrepreneur, do you get do you just train yourself to get used to the rejection, or do you just delegate that to someone else? Um, for me, it was a combination of the two, but at this point, I know what I do. I'm, I'm walking in my design and in my purpose, and guess what? My purpose and my design may not fit everyone, and I'm okay with that. So I think it comes with a level of maturity and security in what you produce um, when you're confident in who you are, what you are what you're doing then I think a bit of that goes away because you know as my mother used to say you can't please everyone mm -hmm. and I know you had a very successful corporate career why mm -hmm. did you leave and become an <laughs> entrepreneur or why did you, did you leave your corporate career and you already had real estate and you said okay I'm out of here how did that process go all right so as you said, I had a phenomenal job. I worked in New York six figures in my 20s. I had a chauffeur that would bring me from my office to my front doorstep when I worked late. Um, I worked in grants and contracts, business management, and I started the Department of Pediatric Research at Albert Einstein. And it's still functioning today. I really like my job, but again, it wasn't my purpose. And I had a um, a lot of internal conflict at a job that's providing but it wasn't who I was it wasn't me it was someone else's vision in two years I made that company 20 million dollars two years mm -hmm. what in the world could I've done for myself with that energy is what my thought process was I did already have real estate though I made my first real estate purchase um, when I was 21 and at that time, I was a single mom and um, just was working in a mail room with $9.14 an hour uh, was my pay. And I still was able to purchase um, a multifamily home, a four-family home. And that was one of my biggest um, surprises in real estate. I didn't know how much of a payoff that property was going to be. It ultimately gave me over a quarter million dollars in income. And we could talk about that later if you want to. Um, but I had that real estate uh, already in place. And I already was flipping properties while I was in New York. And so 
I went to one of my transactions. I flipped a house on uh, in New Haven, and I got a check from that one, a little over a hundred thousand dollars. And I'm saying I'm making my annual salary in one transaction. I got to go. Mm. <laughs> so I had to refocus. And at the time, my daughter was a baby, and I was missing out. Um, seeing my little girl grow up and seeing her walk, it, you know, the tra- the commute was a lot. Now, yeah. you did touch on the fact that you were a single mom, mm-hmm. and I know you come from New Haven, and I've read your story. Mm-hmm. I want to get into that story of coming from that crime-ridden community mm-hmm. and being a single mother, and then going, you have this six-figure job in your <laughs> early 20s, and now you are where you are today. People, a lot of people read people's um, bios and listen to their stories, and they think this stuff happens automatically, uh-uh. and it doesn't. It doesn't. So <laughs> tell us about this. First of all, I, you know, I have to, again, remember I said I don't believe in failure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't even believe in problems. But what happened was perceived as the being a big problem. I was perceived as a problem child. I didn't get along with my mother. Always fighting. Always fighting. Yeah, I was as as cute as I am. <laughs> <laughs> I will fight. I will pull out the Vaseline and put on my take off the earrings. I was just a just an angry child. Angry. Um because I didn't have that was the way of um, expression, emotion that I didn't know how to express at the time. I found myself pregnant at 17. And so here I am angry. Here I am not getting along with my mother. Found myself in a homeless shelter. Pregnant at 17. Um, ended up having to drop out of high school. Ended up going back, of course. And now I'm pregnant. That was perceived as the death sentence of me. That was perceived as the biggest pitfall I could have ever created for myself. Because of course my life was supposed to be over. But as God would see it fit, that pitfall of me being pregnant with my son at 17 ended up being the biggest pillar that I could have ever created. Because now life wasn't about me. And that's what I tell uh, my mentees, that life has to be bigger than you for you to want to change. Life was not about me. It's about this little brown boy that I gave birth to in the early 90s when my first boyfriend was shot and killed. When I lost my best friends. When I was in cars, when when they're shooting up cars and I'm losing friends and losing class uh, mates, losing families to the street violence, as as well as the um, the jail cell. I had a brother that I only saw, you know, every now and then because he lived most of his time in jail. And here I am about to give him birth to a little brown boy, where the stats say that that's what was supposed to happen to him. But God had another plan. And what he used was this little brown boy to ignite what I didn't even know was inside me. And that was a desire and that was a passion to want more for him than I even wanted for myself. Hmm. And because I wanted more for him than what I wanted for myself, I could not give up. Because his life laid in the balance, not mine. His life was at stake. And so it caused me to focus It caused me to say, okay, what am I doing with my life? What can I do better? What do I have to do? I don't want to raise him in the projects like I was raised in the projects. I don't want him to endure the hurt that I endured. So life became bigger than me, and I had to push to make a better life for him. And that's where the start began. And, you know, um, I went, I obviously had to go back to school. I ended up going to Gateway which was the only college that would accept me after I went back to high school, of course, that would um, accept me without my SATs. So I went to Gateway. And by the way, I was recently put in the Hall of Fame there last year. Hey, congratulations. (laughs) Yes. And so went to Gateway and um, 
you know, graduated from there, and then when you go to community college, you can transfer to other colleges, and then I transferred to Quinnipiac. But at Gateway, they had an internship at Yale University uh, for office administration because that's what I went to school for, at least in, at Gateway. Uh, Quinnipiac was business management. Uh, so office administration, there was a job that opened up in the mail room at Yale University in a pediatric business office. And that opened the door there uh, for me. And I think I sorted mail on that job all of about six weeks before I was getting promoted. Because that drive, that drive made me want to have more and more and more and more. Ultimately became second in command of the, um, you know, associate administrator of the entire department from working in the mail room. And then it was time to, um, to to move on because my boss was a phenomenal boss and she taught me everything that she knew. And the only place to go was her job, which I ended up having when I went to Albert Einstein in New York. Um, so it was just a push and not being settled is what made this happen. Um, and also me coming to grips with myself. When I was growing up, my mother would always say to me, um, why are you never satisfied? Like, what is going on? Why do you always want more? Why is that not good enough? Why is that not good enough? So much so that I thought something was wrong with me where I had to be content. And I'm sure you heard that too. You know, yes. be content, be happy with what you are. Why? Right, right. <laughs> and so at some point, I realized that this desire and this, this push of, of wanting not settling is not necessarily wanting more, just not settling for less than what I can be. Um, that desire was innate and I didn't put it there. And so when I came to grips with, you know what, this is the way God has designed me, I came to and, and, um, to understand myself and I didn't, I no longer had those internal conflicts where I wanted to do something else but uh, society says I should just keep this job, you know, where I wanted to go out and start a business, but society says, are you crazy, girl? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I had those, those internal conflicts, but I just had to be in tune with the way God has designed me. Now, as you were building the successful career and eventually the sex successful entrepreneurial path, did you have to drop a lot of relationships that you were in in your neighborhood how did that go you know what I my company my headquarters is right in New Haven still so I have people I grew up with that come in and I'm like hey girl what's up how you doing all that good stuff <laughs> so I never ever really severed relationships I don't believe in burning bridges and just say I'm not gonna talk to you anymore get out my life but I do believe in refocusing and so what I did was refocused um, my priorities and as I refocus my priorities the relationships took care of themselves and that's that's what happened and I know you also mentioned a few times the impoverished mindset do you think mm. that poverty is a choice a hundred and ten percent now uh, Roberta I, now you know <laughs> now, yes. I, I agree with you but you know that people are going to be like oh no it's not but let's get into that why oh, do you think poverty yes, is a choice it is and I would love to sh and that's actually what I'm I'm doing is um, when I'm I, I don't know if you know about it but I am going to different states and I have a, um, a speaking schedule I, I'm going to LA and have some DC and in Charlotte, Florida, I think Philly's on the list, and I'm talking about millionaire mindset and, and teaching groups about how to break the poverty curse, um, and it starts with your mind. And let me just say this, as a man th thinketh, so is he. And if you think that this is all you have, then that is all you have. If you think that you can do better, then guess what? You will do better. You act based on the way you feel inside. Let me just, you know, sister girl talk right now. Mm. You get dressed up and you put on some nice stilettos. What you feel like? A million bucks, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> 
you didn't do anything. It's just the way you thought. You think you look good, right? Right. <laughs> it changed the way you act. Put on something raggedy with holes and your hair not done. You don't feel the same. Why? You're the same person. Because you don't think you look good. You don't think the same. Well, I'm going to just give a couple of stats a little bit if we talk about poverty as a learned behavior. There was a research that I did, um, and it's called Rich Habits. And then they were just talking about how a lot of those habits were learned as we were young. And so when they're learned as they're young, then we pass them on to our children, and it's just what we do. For example, sample, um, we were, these are stats that were from um, richhabits.net. 72% of the wealthy know their credit score. 5% of the poor don't. So what are they teaching? You know, you, you, you got to know financial literacy. You know, a lot of us in poverty don't know our credit score or don't or scared of our credit score or scared to even talk about money. Why don't we talk about money at home? You know, talk about how far does this dollar really stretch and how can you make that dollar stretch more? You know, um, learn behavior. Again, like I said, as a man thinketh, so is he. Roberta Hosky is absolutely inspirational, isn't she? I mean, I got some very powerful jewels just from that snippet. Join our mailing list to find out when you can hear her full story and the stories of other seven-figure-plus earning women entrepreneurs who are a part of this great driven project. Are you in network marketing and having a hard time earning mid six figures? Well, check out my book, Secrets of a Six Figure Earning Network Marketing Diva, and read how a homeless single mother went from zero to making mid six figures working from home. Hey guys, I'm giving it away for free for a very, very, very limited time to everyone who joins the Glamour and Brains mailing list by going to www.glamourandbrains.net. Go over there and grab your free copy of Secrets of a Six-Figure Earning Network Marketing Diva and start earning today. Thank you to all our glams for listening. Please subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Also, go to GlamourAndBrains.net and join our mailing list to get lots of freebies and leave me comments. Also, visit www.SimpleBeautyNaturals.com for all your vegan cosmetics and natural skincare needs.